Um, can you? All right. So you definitely have. Uh, I'm talking to you, Keish. You have uh, roots here in Atlanta, mm-hmm. especially. And or could you talk about your uh, your history with the organized noise family and how you got involved in that it's circle? Like session work, yeah. Because like yeah. like I guess I first met you when you were singing with Outkast when we were touring, mm-hmm. and you've been with them for the longest. Yeah. So how did? Like, can you just explain that? The that circle era? and that legacy, the okay. peach and all them, right? Like, so, yeah. The, yeah. so the way that came about was I signed my deal with uh, Epic. Mm-hmm. We started off C- CBS Associated, yes, um, which turned into Epic, bought by Sony. That was a off. It was a terrible deal, awful. I mean, I just signed. What you want me? What you want over here? Wow. Just sign it. Oh, what you? This too. So and this was you it. signed as a solo artist. Yeah, this okay. is me signed as a solo artist, and so we were. It was just at an age where we were just mm-hmm. knocking heads, and at one point, what year is this? This was eighty. Eighty-eight, 88. was your first. Record. 89 it came out yeah oh, wow. 88 okay. is when we i and recorded the, the entire album right? in a week really mm-hmm. the second one was in 91 91 mm-hmm. how did you get were you fans of the tough crew like how did you get la no, kid i don't know how that shit went came down so because that was a very random i'm from philly so okay he's a guy to us and i'm like okay that's weird yeah so okay. it was i got signed i signed a deal there was a group in atlanta called the voltage brothers okay. and i was doing session work for them like they called me randomly and said like studio in the house in the closet with mm-hmm. mm-hmm. stocking yeah, yeah, yeah. pantyhose on it and it was like literally one of them so and by how old are you at this time this was now i had just moved down from college so this was 80 maybe 80 80s late 87 okay they asked me to can you come and demo this yeah mm-hmm. they came asked me to demo this song for them because they were trying to submit it to diana ross Oh wow! Okay. It was called Hot Little Love Affair. So they su- submitted the song, but they the, the label said, "Well, who's the girl singing it?" And so they decided, "Well, this is not going to be for Diana. If the girl wants a deal, she's got a deal." And then once they like, "This is Millie Jackson's daughter," they were like, "Oh, this is easy. Yeah, uh-huh. this is easy. They mm-hmm. didn't have to put hella stuff into promotions and stuff like that." It ain't nothing but a hot little love affair, which kind of went with the "Oh, that's Millie's uh-huh. daughter," that kind of thing, right? <laughs> so. That happened. I signed the deal. Everybody took everything from me, and I was like, "Okay." So I asked uh, Hank Caldwell, okay. was was the head of the black music department there, and I asked, "Can I just get out of this deal?" So I did the second, the second album, and they pushed the producers out the way, okay, because they were they were trash. And then that's where all those other connections came. And basically, Vivian. Scott, right. Vivian Scott slash Chu, Chu. Right. right. She's the one. She was my product manager, and she she did all that stuff. Wow. Okay. So half of it was done on the East Coast, half was done on the West Coast. He also called, worked with Jay Swift before he produced. I did. Before he did. Bizarre Ride right to the yeah. 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 And um, so we did that. Guy, he let me off the. He let me because I, Michael Jackson. First of all, that was the year that Babyface's Whip Appeal, the first oh. so, freshman album, solo album, came right. out. Michael Jackson. Was on the label. I still right. wasn't getting no love, even though I didn't have uh-huh. these these producers. So it was like I was like, "Can I please just go?" Yeah. So Y'all I had to wait out <laughs> the production, the publishing. I waited it out. Um, I was already in Atlanta, and randomly, randomly got a call one day from L.A. Reid, from Charlotte, who used to be his assistant, saying, "Can you come?" And L.A. Reid would like you to do to come to the studio tonight to do a background session. Now, I had never done background for anybody but myself on on those two records that mm-hmm. didn't do nothing. Right. They went paper, you know mm-hmm. what I'm saying? Not gold, but paper, like they didn't do nothing. <laughs> so um, we went to the studio and he was like, we got this new artist, Tony Braxton. Okay, well, what's wow. the song? Seven Whole Days. Hmm. Mm. So we were, that was my first studio session ever. Wow. Really? Wow. Ever. Wow. Like background wow. vocal session, and so we did that. Then that was good. I kept getting calls from them. Outcast wasn't signed yet, okay. um, so I kind of vaguely knew about Outcast, but I had, still had a whole lot of North in me. So right. I really wasn't really mm-hmm. hip to it. Not really even like welcoming it. You know what I mean? Yeah. I was like, ah, this shit. Ah. You know, work. that's kind of how I felt you want your New York Atlanta. shit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And Atlanta just felt slow. It was just slow and moving everything. You go to McDonald's, you take, why is you taking so long? On well, New York, it's on a time. <laughs> Boom. Boom. 
<laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah, one minute to get the food out. So, um, Joy, mm. me and Joy had kind of, I forgot how we met, but I started singing with her. Mm-hmm. Um, one day, she called me and said, I have to work on my record, cast, and I didn't know who she was talking about at the time because I didn't know Cass was outcast. Right. She was like, Cass is going on the road. Um, this was at the end of AT Aliens. Okay. AT Aliens, Equimini. It was right in there. Yeah. Okay. And so she was like, Cass is going on the road on a tour next week, promo tour, starting in Paris. Can you go? And I was like, when? She was like, in six days. Wow. So I was like, well, yeah, because for me, I needed work. I didn't have mm-hmm. no record deal. I didn't have nothing. So I was like, yeah, but now I got to figure out. I'm about to say, yeah, do you have a passport had, this time? I had a passport. Okay, you did have a passport. had a passport, okay. but did not know song the first. <laughs> so she said, rehearsal, you got to go to rehearsals. Rehearsal is, I said, when? She said, tonight. God damn. So ah. I am <laughs> trying my damnedest. You know, I literally went to like Turtles. Oh um, yeah, cause you gotta you know buy. Saying? Yeah, because I gotta find the records. Yeah, ain't no right. yeah. yeah, exactly. Ain't no streaming. Ain't, ain't no, no streaming. Mm-hmm. I had to find the records, so I went to Turtles to find as much as I could on them, just so I could be half ass prepared for for rehearsal that night. Came in, and that's when I met everyone. Like for the first time, walked in the room. It was rehearsal. It was go. It was, you know, mm-hmm. and and nobody's telling me shit because really they didn't. Joy did all the backgrounds. Yeah. Wow. Her and Peaches. Mm-hmm. Trial by fire. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You gotta... Her and Peaches stacked all the background. Peaches was there. Right. But I was still the new kid on the block, so I was still like, nobody gave a shit. And was this the same Peaches? Was this Wild Peach? Wild Peach. Yes. 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 I remember yes. them Peach. performances. Yes. Yeah. And so course. I didn't know. I, You know, I'm just, and I have a good ear, so I just listen. They play it through once, second time I'm in, you know, so. Mm-hmm. And we rehearsed for five days, and then we, we went on the road. 